so there's a lot of controversy about this, right? So what is testosterone and how does it relate to aggression and conflict? And do people go to jail because they inject themselves with too much testosterone? If you increase your testosterone naturally, what happens to you in terms of competition, cooperation? You know, what does testosterone actually have to do with social status, right? We, we, we all have all these thoughts that, oh, you know, guys like Jeff Bezos or Mark Zuckerberg or um, Elon Musk, they have very high testosterone. Guys who are very successful, very alpha male, uh, all the way from, you know, the homo sapien species who are us and then primates and all the way down to the fish, right? There's all these thoughts that the leader, the one who is in charge has higher testosterone in the social hierarchy. Jordan Peterson calls this the male dominance hierarchy. What is the truth to all this? So there was a paper in the journal Nature, which is, you know, the best science journal out there. And it was done in 2010. And there was some talk about that journal in 2012. I'm going to link everything in the description below so you can see what this paper is. Read it yourself. But essentially what they did was they tried to see the link between testosterone and social status. Because what they found in the past, you know, even before 10 years ago, is when you look at people in jail, for example, the people who've committed murder and rape and, you know, more intense crimes, more, I guess, evil crimes have a significantly higher testosterone level than those who've committed some petty things like theft or, uh, you know, th things that aren't so intense or so evil. And they also found that prisoners who are already in jail, they're serving their jail sentence, the ones that have, have a higher testosterone level are more rebellious. They go against their warden and their, their the, the prison guards and so on. So there was this thought that, oh, maybe higher testosterone means you're more aggressive or you're, 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 you're not so well into the society's social status structure. But those studies were all correlational, right? That's a big thing in science. You need to have studies that are causational. You need to have a cause and effect, not just a correlation. Just because one thing grows with another thing doesn't mean this causes this or this causes this. It could be neither of those. So you need a causation study. So in 2010, these guys did a study that was published in Nature where they looked at the bargaining game, the bar bargaining game called the ultimatum game. What basically happens is, let's say you and I play the game and I go first, right? I get 10 units and they ask me, how much do I want to keep and how much do I want to give to you? So someone who's fair, completely fair would say, you know what? I'm going to keep five and I'm going to give you five. Now, once they come to you, you have the option to accept or reject. If you accept, you get what I said you're going to get. And then I get what I said I was going to get. If you reject, neither of us get anything. So you can imagine someone who is very agreeable, someone who is kind of like just wants the minimum thing in society, right? Let's say that's you. And I say, you know what, out of the 10 units, I'm going to keep nine and I'm going to give you one. Now they come to you and they ask you, hey, you accept and you're like, well, at least I'm getting one, right? At least I'm getting one that's less, that's more than zero. Even if the other guy was being so unfair, was so going against society and, 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 and had this chance of getting rejected because I could have got, I could get rejected, right? I could say, I want nine. I'm going to give you one. You say, no, neither of us get anything and I get rejected. But what they found is that, so, 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 so I, so let's, let me, let me explain to you a little bit better because you may not get it yet. Okay. Let's say I say, okay, what, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to take nine. I'm going to give you one. I'm an idiot, right? Because most likely the person will be like, fuck you. I'm not going to let you keep nine. Fuck off. And neither of us get anything. So I'm an idiot for keeping nine. But I can go a little bit above five, right? I could let you keep four. I, I, you know, I could keep six. I can let you keep four. And you probably say yes, because at least I give you four, right? So what they found is this. When they take a, so by the way, the study they did, it was published in Nature, it was very well done. Uh, they, it was placebo controlled and it was, um, it was double blind, right? This is like the, the sort of the, the, 
the really true science. You need to have these two things and randomized. And oh, another thing to keep in mind, it was done on women. And the reason they did it on women is because they had a pre prior study where they looked at something and they had to use women because it was something about uh, um, salivary testosterone or something that they, they already knew what to expect in their method. So they used women. That was the only reason. But it, this is going to work for men too. You know, that's my hypothesis. But anyway, so what they did was they they took a bunch of people and they said, okay, listen, we're going to give you either testosterone or placebo. And then they saw if there was a significant effect of testosterone. Remember, they're they're giving these people testosterone. So it's a if there is a significant difference, it's causal. Testosterone causes it because they're giving these people testosterone. Now, what they found, this was the main finding. It's super dope. They found that the offers went from 3.4 to 3.9 from placebo to testosterone. So basically that means that the people who were injected testosterone had a higher chance of getting accepted, a higher chance of both parties winning, and thus a higher uh, chance of having a higher social status in society, right? Because there was always this, this debate that is testosterone really social status seeking or is it something about rebelling and being aggressive and all these other hypotheses? And, and this paper basically confirmed, at least provided evidence that people who get the raise in testosterone, testosterone is very, very heavily linked to becoming higher in social status or at least seeking higher social status in regards to this ultimatum game, the bargain game, which is super cool, right? You look at your life, you know, we look at the male dominance hierarchy, we look at uh, in, in our life, you know, what do we seek? We seek for cars and suits and houses and, 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 and you know, trips, vacations, um, going to big parties and knowing celebrities and having a bunch of likes and followers on Instagram and TikTok and whatnot. And you, you tend to think like a lot of that is testosterone related. Why? Because in society, if you want to climb that male dominance hierarchy, that social structure in the materialistic way, having a higher testosterone level may help you do that. And this ultimatum game really is, um, is, is, is resonates with that theory, with that hypothesis. So that, that's a cool, really cool study they did. And um, also there is a link to cooperation. In 2012, a couple of years later, it was just like a little commentary also in nature. You can go read that too. I'll put that in the link. They basically said that this 2010 study lacked a, a few things. There was a, a few, a couple of things that, that they could have done better. And these guys did it better. They played another game. And with the other game, they found that testosterone is actually linked to cooperation, which is also super cool. I mean, in today's society, um, I mean, especially nowadays, you know, for those, for you guys who are going to watch this in the future, uh, I'm recording this at the, at the time when we have COVID-19, this coronavirus thing, and everyone's in lockdown, and we're not supposed to leave our neighborhoods. And so now the social uh, uh, thing is not happening. If people aren't meeting each other, we're not allowed to go anywhere. It's called social distancing or physical distancing, whatever. And so... Yeah, it kind of makes sense. Like right now in, in your life, figure out ways to improve your testosterone, your social status, your, 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 you know, cooperation, cooperate with people, you know, link with people, contact them on, on, you know, FaceTime your parents, like whatever you can do uh, to, to keep healthy, to keep strong, to keep working out. You know, I do my sprints right here in the park right behind uh, you know, every day I do 20 sprints on the, in the grass and then in the street uh, after that fence over there. And I'm doing my yoga and my mobility work at home, lifting weird objects in the house, you know, whatever I have, I'm lifting. So 
you know, I'm continuing my shit. You continue your shit, continue to grow. And uh, I'll be, you know, providing these videos as much as I can. And yeah, man, comment below. I want to know one thing. When you, if what those of you who are on a journey like me to, to, you know, get to that top, top, you know, one out of a, a million or one out of a hundred million testosterone level, just like very epic, very rare person who has this crazy high testosterone. If you're on that journey, just like I am, and you have felt your status change, or at least your sense of seeking status change, or your sense of your, your hierarchical feeling, your vibe inside you, you know, you're looking better, you're feeling better, you're becoming stronger, you're becoming more sexy and, and, and making more money, you know, whatever that is, becoming more attractive and becoming more spiritual, whatever that is, are, do you feel your higher status now on this journey? getting that testosterone as high as possible and and you know and, and again you know it has to do with cooperation with collaboration and that's what we're all about all right dude i'll see you soon uh here in montreal uh, laval actually laval quebec close to montreal see you guys next time peace out